Hey dancers, Ms. Bartenstein here. I'm so sorry I'm not able to see you guys in person, but I'm very excited to introduce you to some of the basic ideas about lighting um, and how we think about lighting for theater and dance. And I'm gonna start by giving you the little intro segment that I give uh, all of my lighting classes when we're just doing our first day of class. So here we go. Um, step one is what does the lighting designer do? Okay, who is this person? What is it that we do when we're the lighting designer? One of the things we do is shaping a visual environment for the play to take place in. And then this can be for any sort of theatrical event. This can be a concert. This can be a dance project, right? So we're shaping a visual environment. We're serving a director's vision or a choreographer's vision and the needs of the play. We collaborate with our other design areas to create a unified production. It's important that whatever choices I make work with the costume designer's costumes and work with the scenic designer's set. And also that all of my timing makes a lot of sense with the sound or the music, okay? So I'm collaborating with the other areas of design. And then I, as a designer, take all of that knowledge about what the production will be and I communicate that um, as a set of drafting, a set of paperwork, okay? So I'm gonna create specific documents that show which lights I've chosen, where they go, how they need to be set up. And then the last thing that I do after my lights are all hanging in the air and they're set up and they're ready to go is I work with my team of electricians, of stage electricians, and we focus the lights. That means we point them all at wherever they are planned to point. Um, we pick out colors, we set all of that up, and then we compose cues in a lighting board that happen at the moments of change over the course of the piece. So that's what a lighting designer does. Now let's talk about the five functions of light or of lighting in a theatrical or a performance setting. Okay, so five functions of lighting. Um, I'm going to talk about them briefly and then we'll go into more detail on each one. So the first one is illumination. We want to be able to see things, right? The second one is atmosphere. So what's the feeling of the space? Um, the third one is selectivity and focus. So lighting in live performance does what the camera does in some sort of a pre-recorded situation, right? So in a movie, the camera can do a close-up. It can tell you where to look. And in this case, we use lighting for that because we can't control where the audience looks during a show. Sculpting, this is the one that's all about you guys. So this is carving out the shape in space, highlighting the shape of the body or highlighting the shape of the scenery. And then fluidity is the element of time, right? So that's timing over the course of the show. It's how the lighting physically moves as it changes, okay? Let's talk about illumination. Here is an image from a set that's well lit, so it's illuminated across the whole space. So we need to see performers. We need to understand the setting around the performer, okay? We, it should be bright enough that our eyes are comfortable, right? If it's too dim, it's hard to see. It makes it hard for us to understand what people are saying, um, and it makes your audience really struggle in order to know what's going on and to interpret the piece. And unless that's part of your goal, you don't want people to be like squinting and having a hard time seeing. So you wanna make sure there's enough light that they're comfortable. Um, and then there are some specific lighting effects that we can use um, illumination, the property of illumination to achieve. So a scrim is an open weave fabric. If we light the front side of that scrim, it appears to be solid. If we light through it, behind it, then you can see through it all of a sudden, okay? So that's a pretty cool um, lighting effect, right? Another thing that we have to think about, sometimes there's a camera on stage and we have to light for that specific camera as well as for the audience who's watching. So we also think about that when we're talking about illumination and what parts of the stage are illuminated. So our next function of light is atmosphere, okay? So atmosphere is telling us all kinds of stuff about what the place is and what's going on. It gives us time of day information. It talks about weather. So this particular scene, it's supposed to be nighttime, right? So you have that kind of dim, cool light and then you have her holding her, um, her jacket up over her head 
is because she's also trying to give us the sense that it's raining. So it's raining, there's weather, those things can be indicated by lighting. You can also use atmosphere to talk about mood, right? What does it feel like in the space? Um, and then sometimes all you have is lighting to convey a location or a setting. And so you're giving us all of that information as a lighting designer. And that happens a lot for you guys in dance because oftentimes your dance projects aren't gonna have scenery to tell us what the feeling of the space is. And so atmosphere really helps us build that using lighting. Um, here are a couple of other images of atmospheric effects. These, these ones have physical haze, right? So like this is a certain kind of party and then this is a very different kind of party, right? Um, and those things are dramatically changed through using atmosphere and lighting. So next we wanna talk about selectivity and focus. Okay, so selectivity and focus is using lighting like a camera, telling the audience where to look. You might tighten down to a smaller area of the stage, or you might open everything up to include the entire space. Um, in this particular slide, in this image, we're emphasizing one character and their perspective, okay? So we're emphasizing this woman who's downstage holding this jar right and we're receding into the background her brother behind her by putting more light on her face and then washing him with some blue backlight so that he's less present for us visually and we know to look at her that she's the most important thing um, here's another example where we have two girls who are downstage their faces are lit so they're kind of in an onstage situation and then in this story there's the backstage area where the other two girls are, are standing they're lit just with red light and they don't have any light on their faces. And so you can tell that there's a difference in those spaces, right? You also pull down sometimes really tight with a pool. So this pulls the focus to those two actors and leaves the one off on the other side upstage that you can barely see in the dark so that we know to focus on the two actors who are at the center of the scene. All right, let's talk about sculpting. So sculpting is key for you guys, right? So sculpting adds dimension. Um, it can also be adding some realistic effects using the McCandla system, which, which Professor Kaiser is gonna talk more about. Um, it defines objects, bodies, and space. And this is why it's so important when you think about it as a dancer. It's also why we use that low side light angle that you're seeing in this picture when we do dance is we're trying to really pop that body off of the backdrop. We're trying to create more highlight on the shape um, using that lower angle side light. Here's another example of sculpting. Great, okay, so now our last element of light, our last um, property that we wanna talk about is fluidity. Fluidity is the element of time. It's how long it takes for us to transition from one stage to another, or from one area of the stage to another. It's movement, and that movement can be a shift in color that can be super subtle. It can be a shift in location on the stage as the focus changes. Um, and it can also be a transition from one reality in the space to another, right? So some sort of magical thing can happen and in time with the music, in time with another sort of transition, you'll see the lighting changes as well. And that helps us create those scene shifts or it helps us define um, a change in the emotional space, right? All of those things are super helpful. And the way that we control fluidity is by setting up cues that happen at certain points in time over the course of the show. Um, so that's all I have right now for this intro. Thank you so much for chilling with me this afternoon. I'm gonna now send you over to see a video um, about how the lighting design process works in a little bit more detail. And then I'll be back to talk to you a little bit about the project that I'm gonna have you do with um, Ms. McNally. Okay, great, I'll see you guys soon.